pray that God touch them in the name of Jesus. I bind the money powers in Jesus' name. It is through the arrows. I decree and the decree. The Lord Jesus Christ, you shall touch us in a special way in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, this morning, I would like to um, uh, talk to you about the title, Everything is Against Me. Everything is. Everything is. Everything is against me. Because sometimes, that's how we feel. But everything is against you. It's like everything you do seems to be coming up against you. But I want to show you from the Word of God uh, uh, that sometimes when in that situation that God may be working a way out for you in the name of Jesus. Are we together? Okay, let us read from the book of um, Genesis chapter 42. Genesis chapter 42, verse 33. Genesis 42, verse 33. Hallelujah. Somebody say, everything is against me. That's how sometimes I feel. All right. So, the Bible says, um, Genesis 42, verse 33, the Bible says, then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your household and be gone. And bring your youngest bride, brother to me, so I shall know that you are not spies, but you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you and you may trade in the land. Then it happened after they emptied their sacks, and surprisingly, each man's bundle of money was in his sack, and when they, they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid, and Jacob, their father, said to them, you have believed me, Joseph is no more, Simeon is no more, and you want to take Benjamin, all these things are against me. All these things are? Okay. Now, NIV says everything is against me. In other words, Jacob was at the place where he felt the whole world was against him. Because Joseph, which he says Joseph is no more now, Simeon is no more now, I want to take Benjamin. Everything is against me. In other words, he loved Joseph. And the brothers reported that Joseph was eaten by an animal. And we see that he mourned for Joseph. Now, when they went into Egypt, they did not know that the man they met who was the leader was Joseph, their brother. And he said to them, uh, he said to himself, I want to prove that these are my brothers. So I want to see my youngest brother, Benjamin, if they have not killed him, just the way they attacked me. And if he's alive, then I'll be able to liberate them or to allow them in each. So he kept the biggest brother. He says, I'm going to keep him. And I'm going to allow you to go, but you have to bring the youngest you know, of your brothers. And if he's alive, then he had a plan that he should allow them you know, to come to Egypt. But when Jacob heard this report, he says, Joseph is normal and Simeon is normal. And now you want to take Benjamin. He says, everything is against me. In other words, he felt that everything in the world was coming up against him. Are we together? But little did Jacob know that when this was happening, despite Jacob was close to God, I want you to mark that, that despite Jacob was close to God, he was the chosen man, you know, after Abraham, Isaac, then it was him. Despite he was close to God, God did not even one day tell him that Joseph, your son, is alive. God never ever told him that Joseph was alive. 
And then when these issues or events were unfolding, you know, he thought everything was against him. He thought, why are these things happening? My children are going. You know, you may be saying, you know, everything in your life is going. In other words, you try to apply for a job, nothing works out. Your home is breaking out. And many, many things are happening around you. And people are coming up against you. And you may feel that everything is against you. But I want to encourage you that just like Jacob, what happened is that Jacob did not know that when he reached the breaking point, it was the time that God was turning things around. It was the time that God was working a way out for him to take him out completely out of her mind and completely with his children and put him in Egypt where he would have enough food. Are we together? Somebody may be thinking everything is against me this morning. But I want to tell you that God is working in a mysterious way. Whatever the devil has intended for evil, God is going to turn it for good. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may feel everything is, is against you. But I've come to tell you that God is working out a way for you. You see, the devil, when he attacks you, he doesn't know. It's the same way what the Bible says. If they knew, had they known that by crucifying Jesus, it would have brought many people to Jesus, they wouldn't have done it. When the enemy tried to attack you, I always say you are a cream. You are cream? Yes. You are cream. <laughs> you are always on top. Yes. No matter how they press you down, you still surface up on top. No matter how they press you down, you still surface up on top. Yes. You are like a spring. Yes. You know the spring. The, the more you press it down, the higher it will go. No matter how they try to press you down, your God is working out the way for you. It is time you are coming out of that situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No matter how they push you down, you are surfacing out. No matter how they try to kill you, you are not dying in the name of Jesus. They may try. They can only try. They can only try. They can only try. You still gonna have that job. I say you still gonna have that job. You see, the devil defeated himself. He was thinking he was nailing Jesus. Every hit he was hitting, he was defeating himself. Little did he know. You see, God is seated higher than the devil. God is seated higher than? The Bible says he sits above. He's the most high God. In other words, the devil only knows one side of the story. He only knows the side that he will try to attack you. There is a side that they try to bury me, but they did not know that I'm a seed and will germinate and come out. Hallelujah. You know, the devil knows only one side of that story. When he attacks you, he thinks he's destroying you. Little does he know is making you stronger. Hallelujah. He's pushing you towards, you know, God. I remember the Bible talks about Jesus being on the sea. The Bible talks about Jesus being on that. And the Bible says he was crossing over to the other side. And as he was crossing over to the other side, what happened is that there was a storm. And the Bible says when he crossed, he found a man with demons. Legion. So, in other ways, when he was trying to cross, the demons knew that Jesus was coming their way. So they tried to stare the storm. But little did they know that the more the storm was coming, the more the storm, the storm was pushing the boat more towards where the demon was. And they tried with Joseph. 
They tried to sell him. But the demon that was pushing him towards his destiny. The devil is not on the way. Demons are not on the way. They may think they are destroying you. But they are creating a way for you. I'm telling you. They are creating a way for you. They can only try. Whatever the enemy has intended for you. God shall turn it for your good. No matter how they try, it will not work out. So I don't want you to feel that everything is against me. Because as for Jacob, when he felt everything was against him, that's the time that God took him out of her mind forever. Because when Joseph proved that it was Jacob, his father, he decided that the whole family should go to Egypt. And they had supplies. They had everything they needed. Everything was provided. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that that's what is going to happen to you. I said that's what will happen to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Had they known that by crucifying Jesus it will bring people to Jesus, they wouldn't have done it. Because as the devil was rejoicing in hell, as he was rejoicing, he said, now we have destroyed him. I am telling you, you are going to resurrect in the name of Jesus. I say, you are going to resurrect in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as they thought that Jesus was dead and they were rejoicing in hell, the Bible said, the one who ascended is the one who descended. So in other words, while they were rejoicing and Jesus appeared in hell and they were shocked and they were trembling to say, ah, we thought we killed this man. And he says, bring the keys of death. Bring the keys of hell. While, yes, while on earth, people were mourning. Something was happening in the spirit. The Bible says he went to the prisons. First Peter chapter, chapter 3 verse 18. He went to the prisons to preach to those that had died long time ago during the time of Noah. In other words, while people were saying, I think it's finished, and they were talking about how good he was and he's dead, but he was busy working out something in the spirit. He says his spirit went to the prison. But I want you to view this, that on earth they were mourning to think he is gone now. But yet, something which was invisible on earth, in the spirit he was busy working something out, taking the keys, and on the third day he resurrected, he came back to life. Hallelujah. And are we together? Amen. So, what I mean is that right now, in your life, there may seem like nothing is happening. There may seem quietness. And because of quietness, you may think, I am done. Amen. But little do they know that God is working something out. You shall come out as a millionaire. You shall come out as a multimillionaire. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are coming out. Say, I'm coming out. Say, I'm coming out. You are coming out strong. I am coming out strong. Because when you feel everything is against you, People, they may laugh, they may smile, they may be in a group and yet they are lost, they are on their own. Or some people may be happy, laugh, smile, but when they go to bed or they are alone, they cry because they feel the world has rejected them. 
But I want to tell you that there is a friend that seeks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus Christ. And the same as the comforter, the Holy Ghost, he shall be able to comfort you and change your situation. I believe that God is working out something for you. I said, I believe that God is working out something for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You know, it says, all things work together for the good of those that love God, who have been called according to his purpose. But I want to read uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. Isaiah 40, verse El Elyon, the Most High God, according to Psalms 91, verse 1. But I want to read Isaiah 40, verse 22. The Bible says, 22, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Now, I want you to understand that the Bible says it's he, it's he who does what? Sits above the circle of the earth. God is sitting higher than your problem. God is sitting higher than the devil. God, in other words, what I mean is that God, because he's sitting higher. So your problem is here. The devil is pushing from this side, but he doesn't know the other side, the outcome. But God is sitting here, and he knows this side and that side. He knows what is happening here. He knows what the outcome will be. That's why you're in the same hands. You do not need to worry because he sits higher above the sake of the earth. He can see the outcome. Why am I saying this? Because when we feel everything is against me, what usually happens sometimes is whereby we feel God has neglected us. When there is silence, the Bible said Paul prayed three times and no silence. God is not saying anything. And then after that, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Are we together? So when there is silence, it doesn't mean that God is not in charge. You need to trust in Jesus. He's sitting higher. He is the most high God. He's sitting higher than the devil. Because why? Sometimes we believe that the devil is going to kill us. And destroy us and we become so scared. No, 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 no. God, when God is not answering because something is happening, doesn't mean that you're going to be destroyed. He is busy working something out for you. He is busy working something out for you. I say he's busy working something out for you. In the name of Jesus, he's taking you out completely out of your mind. He is using the situation to take you out of the fair mind like Jacob. He's going to take you out totally. He's going to provide. Now Jacob, they didn't have provision. Now, he was sitting in the pool. Ah, they, they were the ones who were controlling the food. Stop taking it. And God is going to make this charge. 